a newlywed man was murdered in the community where he lived. During the investigation of the case, the police discovered the couple's affair. The wife, who was straight, had a female lover, and this lover was the reason why this couple got married. What is the relationship between the three of them? In the early morning of March 17th, 2010, a janitor found a dead body lying in a pool of blood next to a residential building in Jingjiang City, so he called the police. Soon after, the police rushed to the scene for investigation. They found a male body lying face down on the ground with blood around his head. The back of the head was almost deformed, with almost no intact bones, and his face was disfigured. It can be said that the murderer was very cruel and brutal. At the scene of the death, the police also found the victim's wallet with several hundred cash inside, which led the police to believe that this was not a robbery murder case with impulsive intention. There was also an ID card named Zhu Peng in the wallet. Soon after, the police confirmed through inquiries that the victim was Zhu Peng, who lived in this community with his wife. They had just moved here for less than half a year and even didn't know many neighbours yet. During the visit, the police learned that on the night of the crime, a neighbour living in the first floor heard some hammering sound when he was half asleep at 3am. But after that, there was no sound from outside, so he thought it was just his dream and didn't pay any attention. Later, according to forensic identification, the victim's death time was indeed around 3 a.m. on that day. Why was he still downstairs at 3 a.m.? According to his newlywed wife, Liu Bo Lian, at 2 o'clock in the morning of March 17th, she suddenly experienced severe pain in her stomach and wanted Zhu to take her to the hospital. However, Zhu didn't want to accompany her because it was too late. Liu was mad and went to the hospital for treatment alone after a quarrel with her husband. Liu claimed she didn't know what happened afterward. She speculated that Zhu might come around and was going to the hospital to find her, but got killed on the way. Liu's explanation sounded reasonable. Zhu wanted to go to the hospital, so he brought some cash with him. However, the police still felt something fishy about her. Usually, if one's husband was killed when they were just married and still in the honeymoon phase, the wife would be more likely to not accept the fact and have a breakdown. However, Liu was emotionally stable and didn't cry at all after seeing her husband's body. Therefore, the police went to the hospital that Liu mentioned to check the patient record of that night and found no record of Liu's visit. In addition, the security guard of this community confirmed that Liu drove out of the community at 3 a.m. Obviously, Liu was lying and was present at the crime scene at the time of the crime. Therefore, the police locked Liu as a suspect. Following this discovery, the police began interrogating her. Without much effort, Liu admitted that she planned this murder, but the person who killed her husband was not her, but her boyfriend, O oh Xiu. She said that she and O oh had been together for five years and her husband was the one who came between them. According to Liu's account, her boyfriend, O, oh, was from Dalian City and they were in a long-distance relationship. Most of the time, they communicated through messages. This time, O oh came to Jingjiang City specifically to kill Ju. At this moment, he should have already returned to Dalian by train. In order to solve the case as soon as possible, the Jingjiang City Police contacted the railway and Dalian Police for a joint investigation to trace a crew-cut young man with a small dolphin tattoo on his ring finger and a ring on the middle finger of his right hand. On March 18th, the day after the body was discovered, O oh was arrested on a train bound for Dalian. When he saw the railway policeman about to conduct a personal search on him, he quickly informed the police, Don't touch me. I'm a woman. Subsequently, O oh confessed to the police that her real name was Yan Hu and she was born in 1977. The information she provided was verified by the police to be true. As soon as they got off the train, the police took her to the hospital for a physical examination and it was confirmed that she was indeed a woman. That is to say, Liu's boyfriend, whom she had loved for five years, was actually a woman. According to O's account, her parents had four children who were all girls, but her parents were desperate to have a son. 
From an early age, the youngest child, Yan, was dressed and raised as a boy by her parents. Over time, she forgot that she was actually a girl. Gradually, she saw herself as a boy and started to have feelings only for girls. She also mentioned that she liked sweet girls, and Liu was exactly her type. But she lied to Liu about her gender. In other words, their relationship was a lie from the beginning. Now, let's go back to Liu. In the summer of 2005, 19-year-old Liu began her college life. Her parents bought her a laptop as a gift for the new chapter of her life. During her college years, Liu, who was not a people person, didn't like to go to parties or go out to meet people. She preferred to write blogs online or chat with strangers on social media. One day, she met a boy online who called himself September. The two had a lot in common and enjoyed talking with each other. Later, the man told her that his name was O Xiu, which means poem and rain in Chinese. Liu thought it was a very romantic name. Since then, the two started a five-year romantic relationship. At that time, O oh told Liu that he was 24 years old and worked in a shipping company after graduating from college. O oh often sent her photos of him on the beach, which made Liu, who had never been in love before, totally smitten with him. What made Liu more attracted was that she felt that O oh respected women very much. Unlike the men she had met online who liked to talk about sex or say dirty words, O oh shared his life with her and talked about his future with her. He cared about how she was doing and whether she was happy. Liu was deeply impressed by the fact that one weekend she received a message from O oh saying that he would have dinner with his customers tonight and couldn't chat with her online, so he reminded her to wear a coat when she was out because the cold spell in Liu's city would come early. These details made Liu completely fall in love with this delicate and considerate man. However, the two were not in the same city and had never met in person. Liu still had concerns about this relationship. Feeling Liu's insecurity, O oh asked for leave from work and took the night train to Liu's university. They finally met. During this meeting, they had just held hands and kissed and didn't make any further moves. O oh said to Liu, I love you not because I want to have sex with you. I am serious about us. O's gentlemanly behavior made Liu feel that she had found her Mr. Right. In the following years, they traveled to Dalian, Nantong, and many other places together, staying in the same room. However, even though they slept in the same bed, O didn't propose to have sex with Liu, explaining that he didn't want to take her virginity irresponsibly because he respected her. After O was arrested, the police asked her, Did Liu never find out that you were a woman? She answered. Perhaps she also knew that this kind of love that started with lies was a bubble floating in the air, which would burst eventually. In the summer of 2009, Liu graduated from university. Her parents were very traditional Chinese parents who felt that Liu was 23 years old and should get married after graduating. That's why her parents began to urge her to find a boyfriend to get married. It's not clear why Liu never told her parents about her boyfriend who she had been together with for many years. Liu told O oh about her parents urging her to get married and expressed her desire to marry him. In Liu's view, they loved each other and their relationship was stable, so getting married was a sure thing for them. However, at this time, O oh proposed to break up with her, saying that he couldn't give her the happiness she wanted. He said, we can only be lovers in spirit. In fact, I have had some problems with my body since childhood, and you can't be a mom if you marry me. Even though Liu said she didn't mind, O oh insisted that he didn't want to hold her up and that she deserved better. Liu saw O oh had made up his mind, so she reluctantly gave up their relationship. Later, she followed her parents' arrangement to start blind dating. In the almost six months without contact, 
Liu worked as a staff in a small company in her hometown. During a blind date, she met Ju, a good-looking and easy-going man. When they first met, Ju liked Liu very much. Their parents also felt that the two were a suitable match for each other. For Liu, who had not yet gotten over her ex, she didn't have feelings for Ju, but she knew he was a neat guy, and if her husband was not O, oh, it didn't matter who it was. In this way, with the joint efforts of Ju and Liu's parents, they got married in October 2009. On the eve of the wedding, Liu was determined to get a closure with the past. She sent a message to O, oh, whom she had not contacted for a long time, saying, I'm getting married. I'm officially saying goodbye to the past and start over. Unexpectedly, O, oh, who had hoped Liu would find her happiness, angrily asked Liu how to start over. You just forget me so soon? That night, O oh sent Liu a farewell message, telling her that he couldn't accept this reality. He would end his life and always guard her as a star in the future. This move made Liu realize how important O oh was to her. She quickly called the police in the hope that the police could stop O. Oh. The next day, O oh was successfully rescued in the hospital and made up with Liu. Liu didn't cancel the wedding, but reluctantly married Ju. In private, she and O oh resumed their relationship as secret lovers. O oh told her that although they couldn't enjoy life in the legal sense, he was willing to continue to maintain a platonic spiritual relationship with her, and that was true love. Liu strongly agreed with O. Oh. She thought of O oh as her soulmate and didn't love Ju at all. On the other hand, Ju's parents treated her like their own daughter, and Ju was also very good to her. However, Liu felt this marriage made her breathless. The longer she talked with O, oh, the sooner she wanted to end the marriage. Every time Ju was on a business trip, Liu would try to make time to meet with O. Oh. Even when they couldn't see each other, she always kept in touch with O. Oh. The chat record between the two showed that O oh had a lot of opinions about Liu's marriage. He told Liu, Ju just uses you to have babies for him. He has never respected you. You are living a life imprisonment in this family. There were unconfirmed claims that Liu often refused to have sex with Ju. Ju had turned to a marriage therapist, hoping to fix the problem, which made Liu feel very humiliated. Liu's hatred for Ju grew stronger and stronger, and she began to feel that only by ending Ju's life could she achieve true freedom and happiness. She hoped to be with O oh openly as soon as possible. However, divorcing just after getting married would hurt her parents' hearts, and Liu didn't want to do that. So O oh and Liu discussed to kill Ju. According to O's oh confession, in early March 2010, Liu repeatedly urged her to end this matter and transferred 4,000 yuan to O oh for expenses, about 600 US dollars. In early March, O oh came to Jingjiang and prepared the tools for the crime and discussed the specific time and place of the crime with Liu. At 9 p.m. on March 16, 2010, Liu rented a car and parked it in the community. She went back home while O oh hid in the car waiting for Ju. At 3 a.m. the next day, Liu told Ju that she had a stomach and asked him to go to the pharmacy to buy medicine for her. Zhu then hurriedly left with his wallet. At the same time, Liu told O oh that Zhu had just left. Then, just as Zhu was out of the building, he was attacked from behind by O oh and fell unconscious on the spot. Afterward, O oh repeatedly hit the back of his head, shoulders and other parts, until O oh confirmed Zhu was dead. Later, Liu drove O oh out of the community. Just one day later, the couple were arrested. After learning that O oh was a woman, Liu, who had never experienced any emotions about her husband's death, suddenly broke down. She finally expressed her regret and apology to Ju. In October 2010, the court held a public trial for the case. It was sad to see that the two people who had vowed to be steadfast in their love turned against each other in court, accusing each other of taking the lead in killing Ju. 
Finally, the court sentenced Yan Hu, the O in Liu's eyes, to death and executed immediately, and sentenced Liu to death with a two-year reprieve. In 2016, Liu was commuted to 18 and a half years in prison due to her good behavior during her sentence.